hello, my name is Caroline, and this video is going to be all about my experience with my Tronxy D01 printer. It's a 3D printer. I purchased this printer in early May. It arrived on May 12th, and I assembled it on May 13th. Now, spoiler alert, this is not a positive video about this printer. As of June 4th, I cannot produce any viable prints out of this printer. And considering it's about three weeks old at this point, I assembled it on May 13th, I would consider this a really bad experience. I was not provided this printer by the Tronxy people. I paid for this printer. I bought it through Gearbest. I paid for this with my own money. I am not new to 3D printing. I've been 3D printing since 2017. I have produced in the last three years, I have produced 13 videos on this channel about 3D printing. I'll link to it below. My my previous 3D printer was an ANET A8. I assembled my ANET A8 late 2017. It wasn't without problems. I did end up replacing a lot of the parts. I did a lot of mods for it, which is all documented uh, on my YouTube channel. I've made hundreds of prints with that ANET A8. And most recently, because of the COVID-19 crisis, the last 127 things I printed on it were face shield frames. I thought, hey, I'll spend a little extra money, buy a nice new, beautiful uh, linear rail printer, the Trunksy D01, and continue printing my face shield frames in the COVID-19 crisis. Let me start with the first printouts actually came out pretty great. This is the Benchy. Here's the Benchy and it just came out so beautiful. This is done in PLA. We have the Calibration Cat, and I think that came out really beautifully as well. Hopefully you can see that. So I printed a couple things in PLA, then I switched over to PETG. Yes, I did increase the temperature, of course, according to the manufacturer's instructions. And the PETG I'm using is brand new, purchased specifically to print face shields. So this is the Prusa PETG, orange PETG. It's brand new. Um, I purchased four rolls of this directly from the Prusa people. It was sent to me from Prague and I've received it, so it's all sealed. This isn't uh, filament I've had for years. This is brand new filament sealed up and uh, being printed in this printer here. The first few prints were really awesome. This one is just, is just perfect right here. And then what started happening was there was this really weird texture that started uh, coming, that, that started coming up right here on my face shield frames. And I printed, I would say, 15 to 20 of these uh, face shield frames here, and then progressively, they just got worse and worse and worse until we got to layer separation, and that was bad. So then we started getting layer separation, so they weren't, the layers just weren't sticking together anymore, and then the quality was just bad, and I got a lot more stringing, and oh my goodness, yes. So then it just got worse and worse and worse, and it got to the point of, I had uh, one, and I'll show you a picture right now, and it just just completely became layer shifted. I had another printout where 80% of it was just perfect, and the last 20% of it was either layer shifted or under extruded. That looked like, so that was really odd that 80% of it, just a little top 20% didn't come out. So I took some pictures, and I sent it to the Trunksy people to ask for their help, and the response I got was, Number one, in which direction is it misaligned? Number two, print the test file we attached. Is it also misplaced? Number three, check the tightness of the belt of the XY axis motor. Number four, check the synchronous wheel top wire of XY axis is loose. From all of that, I ended up replacing the tube. So this is the Capricorn tube. It does not come with the Capricorn tube. This is the original tube. So I purchased the Capricorn tube on my own. I purchased the Capricorn tube, which you see right here. So I replaced, uh, I replaced the Capricorn tube. I replaced the nozzle, and then I, um, and then I ended up having to oil the Y axis. I also, while I was at it, I oiled the um, X and Z axis as well. It turned out that the Y axis was grinding, um, and it had not be, been oiled. At that point, I got three good prints of these headbands. And then 
things started going south again with the uh, under extrusion. This is also brand new filament. This is the Tallman Tech G Clear. So I started printing on this filament that was purchased specifically for this that's still sealed or was sealed up until the, you know, until the point I opened it so I could make these headbands. And this headband printed out, it looked great. And then it didn't print out the last 10 layers. So it's a little bit short. So if you compare it to the, the other one, it's just a little bit short. Did not know what happened here. And plus I think this is a, I don't know if this is a burn mark or what happened there, but yes, we got some, I, I call them crispies. I got some little burnt pieces too. Not good. I started noticing that the temperature was just all over the place. So I sent another email to the Tronxy folks and I said, the temperature's not steady during the print. The temperature jumps from 242 to 230 to 100. Then I start going into what happened when I got the 3D printer. When it arrived, the glass bed was slightly chipped in one corner. And I did email them about it May 12th when it arrived. And I said, hey, this, this glass bed is chipped. Their response was, dear friends, because of the epidemic, the shipping channel from China was temporarily closed. So you can only use this glass with missing corners first. Please understand. Anyway, that's what I was told about the glass bed. All right, but I do want to point out, hey, I just spent $400 on a new printer and uh, you didn't properly package the glass plate on top and now there is a chip in it. And then number three, I said there's major under extrusion and or layer shifting. Uh, li linear rails were not properly lubricated prior to shipment. I have replaced the nozzle and Bowden tube. I've oiled X, Y, and Z axis rods. Printer continues to under extrude. And then uh, number four, the extruder grinds into the filament and causes the filament to stop feeding into the hot end. So the, the extruder is on the back here and I noticed that little flakes of my filament were popping off because it's, it's too tight. And then to the point of, at one point, there was no more filament coming out of the hot end because that had grinded so much into the filament, the extruder had grinded so much into the filament that it, it, couldn't, grow, it couldn't go anymore. There was nothing being extruded because there was nothing being pushed in because it um, had worn it, worn that spot of the filament out. I ended up having to take apart that extruder in the back and then fishing out, cutting out that, um, piece of grinded up filament and then starting over again to get that uh, fixed. So that was, that was bad as well. But they do respond. Their response was number one, nozzle clogging needs cleaning. Okay. And I just said in my previous email, Hey, I have already replaced the nozzle. Number two, check the thermistor sensor head is not in the white aluminum block hole. Number three, I sent you a parameter and firmware to refresh corresponding to the loss of steps. Number four, check whether the cooling fan of the motherboard is running normally. Number five, adjust the X, Y axis drive voltage to 1.3. And then number six, whether the sliding reel is stuck, if stuck, needs to be lubricated. Okay, I addressed that in my previous email. I respond back and I said, you have not addressed my issues two and four. Number two being that the glass bed was chipped. Your response was not helpful. I've responded to each of your items below in red bolt. So this is my response back. Number one, my printer uh, cannot produce any viable prints. This is a defective printer. I would like a full refund or a new printer. The printer is less than 30 days old. As at once again, it arrived on May 12th. It was assembled on May 13th. Today is June 4th. The day I sent this email was 531, May 31st was the day I sent the email. On 6-1, I say, as stated in my original email, I have replaced a no nozzle. Please see original email. Number two, check if thermistor sensor is not in the white aluminum block hole. And I did check that and I do have a picture of that. It is taped in to the heating block. All right, I'm very confident it's in there. I even take a picture and I send it to them. Number three, I sent you a parameter file. I did um, take all their parameter files, the G codes, and I hit print on each one. I've inserted it into my printer. I hit print on each one. I received an error message on the file name called update.cbd. I performed another print after installing your files and the same results with terrible print quality, the under extrusion and the hot end temp is just all over the place. Uh, number four, check whether the cooling fans of, mother, of the motherboard is running normally. Yes, appears to be running normally. Five, adjust the X, Y axis drive voltage to 1.3. That means that you want me to turn over this printer. So the motherboard from underneath 
the printer. The screws are in really, really tightly. Can't even uh, get to it right now. And the chances of me shorting out the motherboard is greater than me actually fixing this. What you're asking me to do is extremely dangerous and will void my warranty. So I say the control board is inside of the base. I would need a multimeter. The multimeter is not included uh, with this printer. And I'm far more likely to short out the board than perform this action successfully. Number six, I, um, whether the sliding rail is stuck. If it is stuck, it needs to be lubricated. I say, as stated in my original email, I have already performed this action. I have oiled everything. Then they respond the next day, June 1st, they respond and say, the problem of temperature fluctuation, maybe the thermistor is not well squeezed out. Because the thermistor is inside the print head, serious wire bending may cause looseness during printing. All right, so we've already talked about the thermistor. I've already checked the thermistor. Now, to humor you, or to humor Trunksy, whoever's watching this video, if the thermistor is loose inside of the print head, what I've done is I have heated up the print head to the printing temperature, 241, which is, or 242, which is what I usually print at for PETG or PETG, uh, to prove to you that the problem is not the thermistor. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move it around as if I were printing, and we'll see if the temperature jumps as it did uh, while it was printing. So now I'm just moving it around. Temperature only moves around while it's printing. If I have it preheated and I just move it around with my hand, the temperature is exactly the same. So let's take a look. And sure enough, the temperature is steady as can be because it's not actually printing. So that tells me, in my opinion, it's a motherboard problem. They told me I need to uh, adjust the XY drive axis to 1.3. All right, so that's number two. The problem of losing steps, first adjust the drive voltage of the XY to be a larger figure one, then put the motherboard cooling fan on its side, fix it with glue first, directly dissipating heat to the driver chip figure two. I would have to get out a multimeter, uh, which was not included in this. And what they're asking me to do, I'm more likely to short out the entire printer than actually be able to perform this action. And I think as a brand new printer, three weeks old, I don't think I should be performing this action on a brand new printer. I think it should be properly adjusted before I get it. But I don't think that adjusting this is going to make a difference. I think that this printer motherboard main board, whatever you want to call it. I think this printer is just plain defective and I've only had it for three weeks it is defective. So I have contacted Tronxy and said, Hey, my printer is defective. I would like a refund or a replacement printer. I have uh, put in a ticket with GearBest. I put that ticket in on the morning of June 2nd. Today is now June 4th. No response on my ticket one way or the other. It just states pending status is all I've gotten. After I recorded this video, I received a grand total of $10 as a refund for this $414.99 printer. I'm putting all this together to say I'm really disappointed in the customer service. I'm really disappointed in the printer and that it's, that it's this defective. I want you guys to know as you are making decisions on what printer you're going to buy, at this point in time, me making this video, I am not recommending a Trunksy D01. Definitely, I'm not recommending anything by Trunksy. And this is an unbiased review. I produce face shields as a volunteer here for my local community, and now I'm unable to produce face shields for my local community, and we need face shields here. I'm sorry I'm making this video. I'm sorry that I've had such a terrible experience, but I wanna be honest about it. And yes, this has been a terrible experience for me. Thank you for watching. My name is Caroline, and this is my review of the Trunksy D01 printer. Bye now.